Hello and welcome to episode one, for real this time, of Overanalyzing with me, Robert, a.k.a. Katana Ray. Uh, let's do some anal. <laughs> <laughs> with me, I have my first guest, which will be joining me for many of these episodes, I already know. Um, my best friend slash co-host slash roommate, Helen Heels, and also we are joined by Faye Menon. Hi! Hi, second cousins! <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Or tonight? It's actually 10 p.m. I was thinking we are going to record this at like 7, but now it's 10.22. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Whose fault was that? That was St. Patrick's fault. Eyeball emoji at you. <laughs> I'm in it. We were all together last night. <laughs> yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah, but y'all were there drinking there. as much as I was. Oh, for those Your listening, choice. it was it just got over uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you guys do over the weekend? I performed at uh, Lucky Fest in downtown Modesto on How Saturday. Was it was actually a lot of fun. This year was probably like one of the most fun year like we had a huge turnout it looked really year. fun it was actually a lot yeah was i was telling john it was like i mean <clears throat> helen i mean uh that i almost regret not doing it this year because the weather was so much better because oh. last year it was like windy and cold yeah. it was awful last year we were in the back tent just freeze everybody was freezing right next to the karaoke yeah no it was <laughs> oh god we were right behind the karaoke yeah, tent yeah, yeah. this year too and yeah. i walked in on some white girl that was super wasted and trying to do what's what's up by Born oh yeah, the, yeah. What's going on? What's, what's going on? That one. Which in what's that up? song, fun, they don't say "What's up" in that song at all. <laughs> yeah, no, it's called "What's Up." Is it? It's called "What's Up," but they say "What's going What's on? going on?" <gasps> oh yeah. Okay, so I was right. Look at us. We're Damn. analyzing already. Look at us. We need one of those like, on sound brand. effects. <laughs> Just a ding, ding. <laughs> Check. Okay, that was our first episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and what did you you went to Monterey, huh? This weekend? Yeah, I went to Monterey. Um, there is this promotions group called Glitterati, <gasps> Ooh, big and fan. they are um, <laughs> doing these pop up shows in certain cities, and they did one at um, in Monterey at a restaurant, and it was super fun, and it was literally like I enjoyed it the most because I feel like it's people who they don't have drag culture in monterey like they Mm -hmm. don't have like a show they don't have a regular thing so it's almost like when the circus comes into town and like everybody (laughs) wants to go to it the freak show everybody buys tickets and they go to it and they're like oh yeah and then it goes away and then there's food there right yeah no there wasn't any food for this there was no food no there was drinks okay well that's enough how was okay okay but a lady got hit (laughs) Oh yeah, um, Helen witnessed a girl get hit by a car. Not a girl, an old oh, woman. A, a woman <laughs> of a certain age, but she helped. She stayed and she gave a statement, like a, a good, like a good like Samaritan. A, a good person. I was born on a castle by person. Of July in yeah. August. I'm a good Samaritan. Uh, well, she also hit her too. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Guideline topic for this episode is going to be about um, shows, which is a vague thing, but basically <laughs> about like the differences between being a performer hosting a show and then actually running your own show whether it being producing it or being the one in charge of everything that goes into it Uh, me and helen have been doing eve's of paradise at paradise nightclub in stockton every thursday at At 11 11 p.m if we're lucky (laughs) you know what i'm so proud of the fact that we are one of the few very few shows that at least within five to ten minutes if we can help it we are always on time yeah Mm -hmm. it's kind of like we are more upset about being late than the audience yeah right it's been six years as of like this month, we it's think. Been mm-hmm. years. It, it wasn't until I was typing up these notes that I was like, wait, has it been a, a year since the last time we did an anniversary show? Because I think last year we forgot too. Yeah. And we had an anniversary show like in mid spring, like April or something for a Pixar show. I don't really run shows. I've only run Eve's. Mm. I've hosted a show once at like UOP, and that was it because I didn't know I was supposed to until like the night of. Oh, okay. Starting with Faye. Uh, well, first of all, can you give like a general idea of how long you've been performing and how many shows you've been in? Like just, just oh. kind of like an open thing. Okay. Um, well, I mean, in general, I've been my first ever performance was when I was either fourteen or fifteen years old. Mm-hmm. So it's like drag has been a part of my life for like a really long time. Have I consistently performed? <laughs> not until like not. Not recently. Not, <laughs> <laughs> not until honestly. Um, when I met Helen on my birthday, uh, I remember the very next week you were like, okay, I met you at the Naomi Small show mm. on my birthday. Yeah, it was Naomi. It was Bob the Drag Queen. 
Was it Bob the Dragon? Yeah. No, it wasn't Bob yes, the Dragon. It was. No, because we met Bob the Dragon. Figure it after out. that. No, <laughs> I met you at Naomi Smalls on my birthday because I went up to Sacramento. Oh, I was performing and were, we met in the back. Yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. yes. yes. It, she's the only one who right off the bat got my name. She's mm-hmm. the only person who was like, oh, like feminine, cute. I like it. It's funny. Not, <laughs> not like, no, like feminine. <laughs> no, she, no, I get that. She didn't all even the introduce now. herself as feminine. She literally followed it up with, what do you think of that name? So, like, it was still in that process, like, where she was still considering maybe a different There's name. a possible different name, and I'm really glad that I didn't. Performed a little bit down in Modesto for a little bit at a place called Club Dirty. I, I was there for one. Exactly. I was there for the Willem one. I remember that. Yeah, I performed for that yeah, one. Yeah, both were. Me and, um, you were there too? Oh, you, did I go with you? Yes. Okay, and Justin was there too. <laughs> yes. What? So you saw me perform before you even yes. knew me. I was the Bhutan back then. Yes. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, I was reading you the house down. You were not really. I didn't know who you were, so I was talking. I, I was like, "Do drag too?" If I wanted to do drag, girl, I <laughs> was such a fucking mess back then. Oh, are we allowed to cuss? Yeah, I would actually prefer if we do. I was such a <laughs> fucking mess back then. She was honestly a yeah. She was a big mess, but no. I've been performing as Faye for about three years. I think I've only hosted a couple of gigs like a handful of times. Running a show completely, I think I've only done once. Mm -hmm. I mean, besides like, you know, the night's like, okay, well, now it's Faye's to host the Eves of Paradise, which I mean, we stopped giving her that opportunity a long time ago for a reason. Yeah, you were the end of it all. (laughs) No, um, I think that was just you guys were trying to like give everybody a a fair chance because that's what Eves is all about you know like why not give somebody another go that's a good point to come back on let me put a a note let me put a pin in that real quick (laughs) um i'll put that quotation marks real quick because that reminds me of a good point i want to come up with later on but the only show that i've ever like run and like had to like produce basically from like the ground up essentially was when i did the summoning last Mm -hmm. year in downtown modesto oh god okay so there (laughs) helen just found a picture of katana that looks like it's a ghost oh my god oh let's take a break real quick like they do and and let's talk about squarespace (laughs) (laughs) just kidding i want to take a break just because i don't know how to edit this that well so let's just make it easier for myself just me just clicking start and stop (laughs) 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 i didn't give them any chance to do anything so you said the last thing you said was talking about you the show that you ran was the sum and the other mostly on your own yeah like honestly the the amount of effort and time and everything that goes into having to produce a show is a lot more than people think and that's where I give a lot of credit to Helen for the amount of shows that she literally has to like pull out of her ass it was a really fun experience it was stressful as shit but like it was really rewarding at the end of the day it's something that I couldn't do on my own like I just couldn't handle it I'd be like no just sit back and just perform I mean in hindsight I say that now but I think it's because I've experienced hosting and promoting a show and doing a show on our own Mm -hmm. that I'm like I'm good you know (laughs) speaking of Helen's ass so (laughs) before we go into that (laughs) before we go into that um, we started with the Ease of Paradise history lesson we started it back in 2000 was it 12 13 Mm-hmm. This was before Helen was even born yet. This was still it was just me and John. And I was performing at places like the same club, like Club 47 or whatever, Modesto. That dub- club 96. Club 97. <laughs> um, that was, that's where Dub Dirty, Dub Dirty. Club that's dirty. where the Club Dub Dirty was. Dub, I didn't hear about Dub Dirty, girl. <laughs> Rub a Dub Dirty, they in there. <laughs> Rub a Dub Dub. Yeah. <laughs> I, very, I only went to the, the bar or whatever as a 21-year-old, very rarely when it wasn't drag related or involved with drag. Yeah. The first couple times we would just go and I think like Terry was there or something like that or Tim was there. It was very like low key there. And I was like, do they have to do like RuPaul's Drag Race viewing parties here? Mm-hmm. Why did I just like, no. ask you the other day too? And they're like, nope. At that time we didn't know there was any drag related things there at all. Yeah. yeah. And then I did two gigs in Modesto and then um, we played with the idea of like just doing our own show there. And we had met a few people that were like, yeah, we want to do it with you. It was like, okay, we have some people who are willing to do it. Because before we were just walking around in drag for no reason, for fun. Um, Well, Helen wasn't. And then it began as me being like the host, the the, the the face face of the show. Oh, got it. Okay. And then John was like the MC that was doing the DJing and like my co-host banter with. And then collecting the music, getting in contact with the girls and DJ all that stuff yeah. a couple months later Helen did the uh, amateur, amateur night. night and that's when basically she was kind of born because she didn't come back for a few months after that either since then it's kind of kind of off and on but it's been there it's been there it's never changed its name or 
the only thing we've changed is our day. We had our shows every other week, and it would be me opening and me closing. And this is before I had any clothes, so I was like, I'm going to wear an all black skirt I got from Ross or something. Drift. Yeah. Hope chest. I only had like two wigs, <laughs> you know. So you we... sound like me now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is what it is now. So that's, it's just funny thinking back about how like we've been running the show, like on literally on our own. Not like the, the bar likes us. Like we have a really good relationship with our bar owner, but there's no promoter. There's no graphic editor, you know, making our flyers for us. There's no DJ. There's no anything yeah we don't even get paid guys. unless like there's some special event going on we yeah. if we do get a payment it goes to like the girls of the night you know mm, like the yeah. favorite girl or the people who travel and things like that or the dj literally been we've been doing drag here at eve's um for basically for free you know for six years at least four yeah, four years at least before people were like respecting us at the bar and like knowing who we were and like taking our show seriously because everyone's like oh you're from stockton or whatever whatever you'll use the paradise and whatever after all these shows come and gone we're still here it might be not the best show you know we're not like the greatest we don't have the lighting we use a tip bucket and people have criticized even that little detail and i'm like i don't it, it works whatever works it works we you get know? ready where we yeah. get ready at we don't get ready that's it <laughs> 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 um, on time <laughs> And then Helen, well, it, not since then, but in the meantime, has also branched off into Sacramento amongst other cities. But give like a kind of a condensed milk version of your point of view as going from non-performer, performer to actually non-performer to host to performer in other cities that don't even know Eves or us or whatever. 2%. Oh, milk. Oh, don't give me the, don't give me the pink cat. <laughs> Liquid poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Everybody always asks, like, well, how did you... And I did the amateur night because I I was like, oh, I can do that. Like, everybody was getting tits. So I was like, oh, I could do this, too, because I'm a dancer. Why not? Didn't and, help me. And then, right. <laughs> and the only reason why I went off to go to different cities was because... It was a um, hard dynamic within the cast because, you know, we were starting out as a show. Like, we were still working the kinks and stuff yeah. like that. Well, that comes, that's actually coming down to that's the whole coming, yeah. giving a chance thing. We can actually explain that further in detail in that because that requires, that's a story. That's a story. Mm. You know, so we can go with that. So stay all, tuned. I'm just, I'm realizing we all have like deep voices. Yeah, it's not, well, I like people said I have a nice yeah. phone yeah. voice. So, <laughs> you know. Okay. You have um, a great face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing face for podcast. <laughs> I was given the, the um, opportunity of hosting on a regular basis because I won a competition where the prize was being given your own show. And I knew that I, since I had Eve's of Paradise, it gave me the chance. Take I, a chance on her. her. <laughs> to a chance, a really <laughs> like create something more and that people just gravitated to that and i feel like it's i think everybody should have some opportunity of hosting in any of the like drag realms like that's why we make it in some of these competitions now like the challenge is you have to host for like two or three minutes and it's not because you're going to be a host but hosting like leads to being able to talk to people and branch and market yourself yeah you know you got to be your own walking advertisement and so it was really nice getting the chance to turn into just like a full-time host a lot of places that I go because that's how people know me now. They're yeah. like, oh, you host this show, this show, this show. Yeah. Even before that, it speaks volumes that you can go into a big, for us, a big city like Sacramento mm -hmm. where they have a nightlife. They have multiple bars on the same corners. Very mm -hmm. prominent. There's, and well, when we started, it wasn't as saturated uh, as, as it is now, but for her to like basically take the opportunity to make her own show from Stockton of all places and, yeah. and maintain that is like you know we love Sacramento and I think the drag lane Sacramento is really good but I feel like it's it speaks on her part that she was able to do that as an outsider with no you know, credentials as like oh she's been doing this for this long and that long and she knows this person her drag mom's this person uh, Taryn through you but you know <laughs> <laughs> shout out Ricky was like you should have Taryn on but I think I would really love to have her on here because I think Taryn was the first drag queen I ever saw perform. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. She's got a voice, too. Anyway, so... Um, a deep-ass voice. When was that when you had to go and branch off to like do Sacramento? <laughs> At least like three or four Five years. Five years ago. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was the first year? It was year? just within a year of doing oh, drag. Oh, okay. Because 
I was ousted, and unfortunately, I was just keep it real. And unfortunately, because of that, I had to start go performing in Modesto and Sacramento for free because that's where I could perform with for free without drama. Unfortunately, the girls that I did know knowing me like nobody knew me so i had a really good fresh start because a long time ago i really honestly thought maybe it was me like maybe i was the reason maybe i really was the cause and then you know later on i'm like i was not (laughs) within the second year of performing um was when i started hosting but can you travel i do travel. (laughs) (laughs) you're a bottom who can't host (laughs) and on that note let's take a break and we're back. We turned on Helen's live stream. We're gonna be able to hear that hella loud. <laughs> Here, put them in a bowl or something and then just eat them out of that. So I'm well, trying to do ASMR pretty- at the same time. <laughs> I think that was like the defining factor of when I realized that I had a connection with you that was well ASMR. beyond. Yeah, like yeah. problem earlier. Give it, I got it. Give it, I got it. You gotta give it. There we go. Okay. okay, we're ready. So we're fed, we're hydrated with soda. <laughs> just finished talking about Helen. Well, just part of her, her origin story, but I made a note for that later. Okay. Um, we have her live stream going on. So, so we're taking Q&As yeah. as it's happening. Okay. So if you guys listen in the future, you can follow me uh, on social media, or if the person that I'm posting with is going to be on the episode, I'll have them do theirs, because you're probably more interested in them than me. So I'll have that <laughs> on there, and you guys can submit your own questions, and then we can submit them to my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Say submit again. <laughs> Submit. Crack. <laughs> Submissive. And then, um, and actually, you'll be involved in my podcast. Fun. Oh, fun. fun. Interactive. Um, and I'll give you uh, a shout out if you like. It and I'll stick my foot my up your ass, baby. Okay. Um, I like how I said, like, I don't want my channel to be about drag topics. <laughs> my first episode's about like drag. <laughs> um, but I feel like we're analyzing shit. Right? No, we're over analyzing it. Um, is there an anal option <laughs> when it comes to drag? Um, no, really. No. Uh, as far as when you're booked for a show, then when you're hosting, and then what it is when you're oh, or producing a show, like how we do at Ease. Like, what are some like mm. differences and contrasts and comparisons that you like? You find that you enjoy more about like doing either one. My voice cracked. Uh, I tell I okay. tell people all the time, like when they're like, "Oh, are you performing tonight?" But then they'll also be like, "Are you hosting tonight?" And I'll be like, "No, I'm actually I'm just performing." Like, I'm actually really excited because when I'm just a performer, it means that I get to actually, like, chill. Oh, like, I want to do absolutely nothing. You're able to, like, actually enjoy the company of the other queens, which I think is an important No, part. I don't even want to talk to them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, just, no, no, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, exactly. sometimes, yeah, sometimes you just want to, <laughs> like, like, chill. Focus on the number. Yeah, get ready in, a, in a, an appropriate amount of time. I also feel like it's question. almost more pressure if you're being booked for a show that you have to, like, show something of why you were booked in that spot. Yeah. yeah. But other than when you're hosting, it's, it's not like you have... To, you have that one shot to make an impression. You have like a few shots as a host, and more than likely people know you and they want to go to see you host, not just to perform for that one time. You it's, know? A, exactly. it's, it's a common truth that if you're the host and you get people on your side, you already get like an edge because people are like, oh, she's really funny. Next time she comes out, I'm going to give her money. Mm-hmm. I, I do feel that advantage when I'm hosting, and I will pick numbers specifically. Like the host only has to pick like, a certain kind of number because she's almost if she's really good at what she does she's guaranteed to get the audience buy-in already mm-hmm. whereas the performer they go out there for those three minutes and if you suck you gotta wait around again yeah, yeah. Um, what do you feel about that about like the difference I, between... yeah yeah since you've done at least one of each right um they're definitely just one just one <laughs> this many <laughs> <laughs> i held up two fingers <laughs> I had to make it a definitive point in my standpoint, like when it when it came to producing the show and running the show. I, I felt like I missed a lot of what I love the most about doing drag, which is like the feeling of camaraderie and sisterhood, if you will. Like getting to talk to the other queens backstage or the other performers backstage and being able to just kind of like get together with them. I don't know, like it just bond. Yeah. James Charles Bond. <laughs> no, but it was it was in a blur, and I had to make a definitive point to be like, is everybody good? Is everybody okay? And I wasn't thinking about me. Mm-hmm. When you're performing, all you think about is you and yeah. what you're going to be doing next. But, like, the hosting, you have to care about everybody. Oh, you have yeah. to care about, like, the DJ. Is the DJ okay? Does that? DJ need water? <laughs> Who said that? I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm going to worry about myself first. I'm like, you, you ready? Julie on a budget? 
play the next one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true what he's saying, like, producing and your hosting, you got to make sure the DJ is good. You got to make sure the bar is good. Mm-hmm. You got to make sure that mm-hmm. the audience, like, you have to keep checking in with them, almost like they need babysitting sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that last number was really, like, you got to make, even if the last number sucked ass, you got to make it seem like, wasn't that different, you guys? <laughs> Wasn't she edgy Partially. or pretty? We Wasn't she just so preggy? Don't we wish she would just die? <laughs> yeah. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting to say that. On, like, but <laughs> okay. I, don't, I wait for people because no one ever says yes to the first two. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm not going to go far. <laughs> um, I feel, for me, I've only had to produce half, you know, half co-produce Ease of Paradise and I think that's it that I can think of. I've been involved in the making of some shows, but responsibility-wise, I've only had to take on some things with Ease of Paradise. And that's, like, really random stuff, like the graphic design of making the flyers, because a lot of shows oh. have producer promoters that take care of all that stuff, like making flyers, even though half of them are on templates nowadays. And collecting music is usually just like, oh, here, give the DJ a track, and then that's, you're good. Yeah. And all that stuff. So, but we literally, at the Ease of Paradise, I don't know if people know this, is that... I make all, most of the flyers that we make. I used to make a lot more often. Yeah. More often than not, Helen collects all the music. A lot of the times, the girls don't have MP3s or WAV files. They're like, "Here's a YouTube link." What? Still? Yeah, still. And so that this requi- whole the whole time <laughs> you have to go look up that YouTube video, copy the URL to that video, go to a YouTube tracker or a YouTube converter. Converter. Convert all you have that. to do is do a quick Google search. Yeah. Honestly, it's not that difficult. But people, some girls still don't know how to do that shit. And it's like, either buy the track on Amazon Music or Apple. It's a dollar. Support your artist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because if it's a mix, then they, they've been dead. Been it's dead. already... They've been dead. They've been, been dead. Dead. They've been had downloaded that track. Yeah. Grammar. On Grammarly. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, they do all this stuff and... And if you go to a lot of bars, they're like, here, just bring a USB, bring a CD, you're good. So when we ask them, can you actually just take the effort and email us a track? It's like, what? what? Oh, how I don't have what? the technology. Wow. John's is like, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll yeah. find it. I think we pride ourselves on that. Because for me, that's how we started doing drag was our own stuff. We didn't have people telling us like, oh, just do this. I'll take care of everything. Yeah. Like the, the thing is that Paradise gave us the opportunity to use that Thursday night slot. Because didn't really have anything going on on Thursday nights. Like, they have, you know, hip-hop night, they have karaoke night, they have Latin night, night. Um, industry night they had College at point, night. Things like that. So Thursday was a blank slot for us. It was the deadest night of the week. So if anything, it'd be better than having nothing. nothing. Yeah, exactly. I think that only bugged me at, in the beginning of my drag car- career because we had so many older queens, not even older, but, like, more seasoned queens that were established in the 209 telling us that we're this this and that and we're like not like inclusive and we're not you know we don't do things that other shows do a certain way and I'm like and this was a point where I was trying to just be nice with everybody and being like okay well whatever you say but at the end of the day we could have both just said well it's our fucking show so what <laughs> yeah I mean like how many Disney themed shows can you do before it gets I mean like yeah like done over. well for me I'm such a fucking hipster it's, let's just do something a little bit different and make a twist on it you know like just like we can do these things but do it different like we did a twisted fairy tale night for Halloween one we did things were not really conventional but they were like different at least like oh like, did, like this this last Halloween season when we did uh the urban legends one yeah. that one was yeah. really fun yeah it's like we can go stupid with it we can do serious so you can do whatever it's really up to the queen's creative ability to do these things that made it an issue because a lot of times like well i can't think of anything to do for disney <laughs> no not literally but like i can't think of anything to do for this thing i don't know what that is <laughs> we did a show called criminal intent because we kind of played with the, the reputation of stockton being dangerous yeah, crimes, like, say, yeah. and i was like wouldn't it be so stupid if we did one about crimes did you guys just perform Criminal Intent? No, 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 no. But the theme, I think the idea came from that song, but like I did Arson, so I did songs about fire. This girl is on okay. I did This Girl's on Fire. I, and I did something. Firestarter by Demi Lovato. I did all these things. You did prostitution. He did prostitution. Mm-hmm. And then we did people like, you can do like stupid stuff. Like you can do like flashing. Charm is really good at thinking of those really weird ones. Like when we did our witch theme for Or, her, or the goddess one, and she yeah, came out with the green, green goddess, goddess dressing. <laughs> Well, for I the witch one, she came out as sandwich. a sandwich. Oh yeah, I forgot sandwich. about that. <laughs> and then she came out as the witch, uh, the witch of the east, 
with just her legs under a house. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. She just sat there with and a like, fake cardboard house. house. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's funny because when I used to perform just on my own before it, Helen was around and Helen was like my entourage and then um, oh. very standoffish oh. I am. <laughs> Yoda moment. <laughs> Very standoffish I am. <laughs> Around the survivors of Perimeter Create. <laughs> survivors no. Perimeter Create. I'm shy as fuck, and I am introverted, but also I always use this as an excuse. I can't see when I'm not wearing my glasses. It is the funniest yes. fucking thing trying to tell her, Katana, look at this, yeah. when she's in drag. Like she has, She has contacts in, you have 401s on. Mm-hmm. Not even 301s, you have 401s. I have 401k on my <laughs> <laughs> All on my eyelash. <laughs> the funniest thing you look like that one uh, meme of that woman the girl. with her hands on her hips no and that's what I did for, um, that, was me, that was me judging drag star literally was me <laughs> like, me on the inside was Jennifer uh, Lewis on the first episode of All Stars but I mean in reality was me like bending over the table <laughs> it was me not on, see. Like, the lights were off it was neon night so it's like black <laughs> lit I'm like she got freckles on <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, from going in just into drag in the scene and then going into Eve's and doing shows in different places, I've always been known to be standoffish. And people are always like, scared to talk to They're me. They're intimidated by you. But you I are intimidating. S- I don't want to say I'm intimidating or I, in- I scare people. But I feel like my, to myselfness comes off as like cuntiness. And it comes yeah. off as like, oh, well, she's almost talked to me. It's and- also the level of your painting skills. You paint beautifully. And you paint fiercely at that it's not just like very like gorgeous makeup but it's fierce so that combined with your whole oh i'm over here just hanging out with these select few people yeah it might come across as a different way because that's the way that the people who go out into the drag world conceive it as rather than you actually just being an awkward fuck yeah and it's it's, it's weird because i think when people go into drag especially with drag race coming in and everything is that like people have like this identity of like this is what a drag queen says and this is what a drag queen does and this is what we're supposed to be we're supposed to be divas and bitchy and read people mm. and do these things we're supposed to be like hey girl da, 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 la ganja stranja you know these things yes god yes god yeah. but you know like that was the thing that people thought like oh well I'm a drag queen so I have to say these things ended up being very like um, like a bastardization of what drag culture was and I do like to use the word appropriation, but I think a lot of drag drag culture now is just a bastardization appropriation of queer culture from people of color. And it's people of color yeah. from, like, uh, the East Coast. And, like, for me, I have a whole thing about the word yes. Yeah, yes. the one that has, like, 15 different A's in it. Yeah, but I'm like, S. when people in the, <laughs> in the old days would say yes, they're just saying <laughs> Yes, with like a really gay ass accent. Yeah, exactly. There so was there's no like, stink. Yes! They weren't saying, Yes, queen. They yeah. were. <laughs> yes! Yeah, when they literally. actually pronounced the A yeah. harshly. I don't know so what annoying. happened where someone, maybe Katy Perry, who knows? They were like. <laughs> wig. They, <laughs> did you just say wig? <laughs> this is our word. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> In text, they, they typed out the word yes, like Y A S S S. And they're like, Oh, what's this word? And then the world of the mainstream caught on to yes we're gonna suck the shit and we're gonna make this. that a thing and yeah. now everyone's saying yes 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 I blame the or Lion like, King wh- clip which one yes yes the one do I do the one thing I do like is like the clip the Pokemon where, no it's the, the Powerpuff Girls clip and it's like <laughs> when my sister drops that truth tea honey and it's a video of him and it's like yes <laughs> <laughs> so I have all these opinions about what drag etiquette is yeah but that's not, another episode not so much as not not so much as professionalism but it's like you know I don't really feel like we have to do all this crazy shit especially I mean if you don't know the people in the room yeah. like I don't know people I didn't at the time I didn't know people from Modesto I didn't know people from Sacramento so for me I was like I'm gonna focus on my booking and performing good and that's all I can focus on now I wasn't really worried about getting to know the other girls as much I was open to talking to them I remember when I first performed in Modesto, I met Malay Balenciaga, and we chatted it up in the kitchen. In Modesto? Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. And she talked to me, and we talked about everything, and it's real chill. And I thought, that's, like, my kind of interaction, is just, like, just chit-chatting over bullshit. You yeah. Know? And, one, I can't see shit far away. So people <laughs> in the bar are like, I wave to you, and you, like, hi back to me, so I'm offended. Not literally, but that would be the vibe they give me, and I'm like, 
I can't fucking see you. <laughs> I could be staring right at you in the face, but if I can't see you, I'm not. If someone's gonna wave at me, I'm not gonna just straight up just. I'm not a bitch. I'm blind. Yeah. There's a difference. I'm not a bitch. <laughs> no, I, I just love bitch. love. I mean, sometimes I am. Nowadays, I am. Like if yeah. I know the person, like a Scorpio Savage, would just walk up and be like, "Hey, girl." I'm like, <laughs> you can't see. You can't. It, she is uh, giving side face. eye. <laughs> I could be wearing full on opera glasses and be like, "I don't see anybody over there." But okay. I don't see her. That's Man, making it got me dark in there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's shame. Um, but anyway, moving on. That was a big ass long tangent. What are some like common misconceptions that come with blank that I didn't finish my note? <laughs> so I would say like even for people who don't do drag, like as a performer and as a host, what are some things that people always assume about you that is not? I think we should just take one. I'm not always in a good mood. That's the thing, is that sometimes like you're trying your hardest to be a fierce performer, but like and then people want to come up to you and you don't want to seem like you're rude. But sometimes you're not in the best mood. So sometimes, or also um, that you're a makeup artist outside of it. Real and then everybody always wants, like, how many yep. times? Yep. When are you going to do that part? Yep. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that I want to do your makeup either. Yeah. Don't care if you pay me or not. Exactly. All, speaking of pay, common misconception is that everybody just thinks that you get paid. Mm-hmm. It's like there are so many shows that we just do for free. Eve's has always been a free show. Like, that's, that's the thing is that, like, I moved out to Stockton. I'm excited about the fact that I got the fact... Or, blah, blah, blah. Take it to the doctor. <laughs> I... Oh, God, is a... <laughs> Hercules references today. I had thigh eye. Um, I just said that earlier. No, but that we don't always get paid. Like, some of our shows we just do for tips. And, like, Eves has always been that way. Eves has always been just, like, people come out to Eves because we have a good time. Like, everybody knows that you have a blast doing Eves. No, like, I, uh, yeah, that's also a good thing is that, like, not every venue is going to be able to be lucrative enough to produce uh, a payment for all of you. Because mm-hmm. we probably could get paid for Eves, but it'd probably just be us. Mm-hmm. And I'd rather just have all of us get something than just us you know we can at least give it to like the top two of the night who whoever choose it's kind of random it's like a lottery basically yeah. sorry bottoms <laughs> a lot of younger queens that come out from uh, not younger in particular but just newer queens newer that are in more lucrative areas like bigger nightlife cities are able to get booked from their first gig you know and we aren't <laughs> so, <laughs> we aren't so i when i get paid when i even when i used to do like uh any of like hell and shows i'm like oh i get paid to be here like, damn, I forgot people can do that, you know? And I just do it because it's fun, um, and I like the attention. You can't tell everyone, welcome to our show, we're not getting paid. No, yeah, exactly. No. So you have to kind of be like... Um, Fake it. In my mind's eye, I would hope that they would, like, appreciate that we're doing it for free, but they don't, because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like, we appreciate the tips because that's our payment for the day, you know? So yeah. I would hope that... The girls who do, like Rebecca and all them that come out, the people who know that we do it for free, they're there to support us for us, not just for like, you know, it's their friend's birthday or whatever. But continue? No, I think, yeah, no, I, I agree. A common misconception about just being a drag performer in general. Uh, not everybody wants to go on to Drag Race. Mm-hmm. I don't think that necessarily telling somebody that, oh, I think that you should be on Drag Race. Why don't you audition for Drag Race? Are you auditioning for this season of RuPaul's Drag Race coming up? That's not necessarily, like, yes, it's a compliment in the sense that somebody's telling you, like, oh, I look at your drag and I think that you have the aesthetic as to what it takes to get on television. Mm -hmm. When in actuality, coming from, like, no offense, but, like, the vast majority of, like, drunk straight white girls that come up to you and tell you that oh my god are you going to try out for RuPaul's Drag Race it's not necessarily a compliment Becky like, you know that's like going to someone and be like oh my god I love your potato salad are you going to be on Chopped? yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> top chef? like honestly we're are you going to be on the Great British Bake Off? we're <laughs> <in> town <laughs> for potato salad they have some weird challenges on there mm. so I'm going to have a soggy bottom I think the misconception is that everybody has their shit together, basically, <laughs> is what I'm trying to get Just at. shit together, Carol. And, like, nobody has their shit together, ever. That's literally, like, Captain Marvel in a nutshell. Get your shit together, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Tanvers. I haven't seen it yet. Origin story about her and who she is. And then the one girl who's like, I know who you are, I've known you for all your life, you are Carol, blah, 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 blah. So that just reminded me, like, get your shit together, Carol. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, at least within our communities, I, I would hope... I know, not really familiar with Fresno, but I know some, at least some Fresno queens, and I know a lot of Sacramento queens, and I know us, like, we actually have, like, 
I don't like to throw the word sister around, but we have like a really close knit circle of friends that um, we just happen to perform with a lot. And you can see that. And I think there are other people when you can tell that they don't fuck with each other. I think if not all of our cast members are like close friend basis that we like can have, we can fuck with each other and we can have fun. Yeah. You we know, can like say shady shit you can take to each other, each other. Yeah. exactly I can't even pinpoint what you specifically make fun of me for you having, you're a skinny having no tits ass or skinny no titty have an ass bitch Do or like that? That? or like oh, or like living living five minutes away but you're still the last one to show up <laughs> <laughs> you might not know about that one that one's new <laughs> that one's new it <laughs> just happened you should get to your one your common misconceptions about hosting um this is my show that you can host not <laughs> yours <laughs> I don't like saying a sister because I have two sisters of my own and I, they're my sisters. Y'all are my friends <laughs> and acquaintances and my co-workers. And roommates. Uh, we're like a collective. You know how, Ooh, I like you that. You know how artists have collectives? Yeah. I didn't know what the fuck a collective was. We're until like two. Mm, no. Yeah, I'm going to go jump um, off. The yeah. <laughs> um, but I think we have, you know, I think a collective is a nice word for it because we're all artists and we're all different. And I know that you can totally see it with like the girls the second one, like mercury and apple and um yaya and rosalie like all them like you can tell like we like each other it makes the show work better because you can see that we like each other we have fun supporting each other um kara and deja and fresno like i don't remember how i met kara on like facebook fyi kara canada was from fresno she's amazing she makes really good memes too but <laughs> Um, of herself I, I connected with her on Facebook and stuff I didn't even I, I, when I met her in person I think it was I don't know if it was for Stockton Pride or something else I forgot that I have not had met her in person because we had talked shit so much about eating pizza and, and I met I only met Deja probably twice in person really? yeah and I feel like I've known her this whole time but because we can talk shit and have fun and it's like not like a weird awkward thing because it's like we're yeah. like oh like long lost friends that we're getting seen each other yeah pen pals oh. yeah that's a good thing that we have going on right now that people may not know that we actually do some of us really do get along and we all are like our close friends and sisters and all that stuff and I think because a lot of people think they want us to be catty and dramatic like on Drag Race yeah, um, yeah. But in reality I think a lot of us like each other more than they think they do so you can go on with yours for me biggest one is that like people I honestly think that people think that when we're coming up with show ideas themes production that we have all the money in the world to do it. Right. And I am here to make it clear. Like, we are given a check. And that check is literally like, okay, here's the money produced now. But it, people think, like, I make money off of these shows. And the majority of the time, I'm taking home a very, very small portion of everything. Like, my check for me has to get divided up into paying girls has to get divided up into whatever it is I need to get the show on the roll, mm -hmm. um, including prize money, mm -hmm. tip money. That's a lot. And then another thing is that people think like, oh, you're on a power trip because you want this, this, and this, and this. The whole point of being a producer is that you have to come up with concepts and you have to come up with fresh stuff mm -hmm. so that people even want to come in the first place. Yeah. So if you give everybody a seat at the table, the problem with that is that you're going to have a bunch of random ass shit and nothing good. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you are the only voice being the producer, just like with like theater, just like with um, movies, just like with like business, you make that decision based off of what you have experimented with and you have found it would make good in the equation. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, the, most clubs are not like, I can't wait to see this drag show with these local performers. Most of the time they're like, okay, we need to make bar sales. We mm -hmm. need to make it so that our club is intact by the time it's done. Mm -hmm. And then you guys just happen to be the clowns walking around. Yeah. I thought Helen was going to be like, a common misconception about producing, that it's hard. <laughs> that I give a fuck about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I just, and then for hosting, like, I feel like a lot of people think that we as hosts get to chill and we don't. We're running around like mm -hmm. mad women. I feel like some hosts do sometimes like I've we've witnessed shows where like when we perform and then all I have to do is just collect the music and then run out to the DJ and then they'll just sit back stage and say give it up for this person <laughs> and, you know, and like because sometimes actually having a DJ out there like when Juliana's up there it actually adds to the show she's like kind of like a, a backdrop she's you know? a punching bag she adds to it and whenever we have a DJ that can like she is almost interact <laughs> and interact with our performance to make it better it's like 
it adds something a little bit like interactive with the show. Yeah, like so me it, throwing a glove at her, yeah. like Jamila flipping her off. Yeah, like, yeah, and it's, it's like, like an Easter. Egg. Yeah, yeah, like Liz does it too. It's really funny. It's yeah. like a show in itself. Um, I mean, and it's not. And luckily, the girls who do it, they don't like take away from the performance. They add to it. You know. Yeah. So um, it's nice to have someone on the floor watching the whole thing, so they can be like play off what they just did. Exactly. And then introduce the next person. And, and then, that's great for hosting like capabilities in the future too. Yeah. Just having that little fragment of yeah. Because usually, yeah. most time when we host, it's like we're in the back. We we're have like no tag clue teaming, what's going on. running yeah. across the bar, changing halfway with no wig on, running no half, shoes. running halfway out the door because they can't pick up the microphones <laughs> halfway through. <laughs> so we're like out there, like give it up for Julie on a budget. And it sounds and like all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Duffy. It's just like give it Make up, mercy. <laughs> There was another club, I'm not going to say which club, but there used to be another club where they had that problem and you could tell when the batteries are dying because everybody in the audience, all you would hear would be like, all right, <laughs> four, <Ooh>. yeah. <laughs> Sample that. So you, the beat. you have the audience just going, what's what? going on? Yeah. Because they don't know when to clap because they don't know when the when the sentence yeah, is done. Yeah. I think having a face out there also creates that like later on when they see that queen, they're gonna know like, oh, I really liked her. She was yeah. being a dummy. Yeah, because a lot of times the girls that do that are only doing like one number. Yeah. So that actually gives them a little bit of like, you know screen time. I really actually would like that. Yeah. Like, and that was the end of part one of this episode. We talked and talked and talked, so please stay tuned for part two coming very soon. 